you can be unserious with someone else, but you're not gonna be unserious with me. Like, no, I'm, I'm leaving. <laughs> yeah. Hey y'all, it's Maria Toyo here. On this channel, we talk a whole bunch of things, ranging from dances to makeup to life in general. Anything you could possibly imagine, I'm trying to tackle on this channel. So I would love to have you guys join me on this journey. So make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, and leave a comment down below. So during this video, we are gonna be talking about 21 things I learned at 21. So if you don't know that I'm 21, about to be 22 tomorrow, check out my first video where I say that I'm 21 and many people don't believe me. Contrary to popular belief, I'm 21. Yes, I'm 21. I get called 12, 13, 16, 10, 10. But I'm 21. Yes, I'm 21. Now 21 was an interesting year. I would say the word I would give this year would be growth. I really thought I kind of had everything figured out. Like, something like, what else can I learn? Like, I think I know everything. Boy, was I wrong. Boy, was I humbled. No. <laughs> and I definitely want to share with you guys things that I have learned throughout my year being 21. This is a little more serious video. I have a jokey side you guys have seen, but you know, I also have a little more serious me. I gotta be serious, so. This is gonna be kind of a long video. So get your popcorn, get your drink. Please listen to it fully, okay? Sit back, relax and listen to your girl. All right, let's get into it. I'm gonna try to break it up into like personal things and then relationships and friendships towards the end. Number one, not everyone is going to like you and that is okay. I don't know where I got this idea that I felt like I needed to be liked by everyone, but 21 has definitely taught me you could be nice, you could be sweet, you could treat someone with respect and they will still disrespect you, they will still be rude to you, they will act like you're the scum on the earth. And I said, fine, that's fine. You can keep that negativity elsewhere. I'm gonna be here doing me. So that's why it's so important to really just be you, do you, and don't worry about these other people. If they don't like you, forget them. Like, bye, bye. I don't even need you in my life anyways. Like, what? You missing out, and that's fine. Let God protect me from those people. Whew. Number two, staying in your comfort zone doesn't get you far. Now, my comfort zone for me is like, just my quietness. I'm like an introvert, extrovert, extrovert, introvert, whatever you call it. I think I'm naturally introverted, but if you were to talk to other people, they'd say, oh no, Maria, you're extroverted. And the thing is I could turn it on. I could like, it's like a switch, but I have to mentally prepare myself. I've been put in positions where I've had to be extroverted. I, have to, I had to be outgoing. And I realized that that has helped me get opportunities that I wouldn't have gotten if I was just quiet. Yeah, so I really feel like it's important to get out of your comfort zone and it's hard. Ooh, comfort zone is it's comfortable. You wanna stay in that comfort zone, but I definitely really feel like in order to grow, you really have to get out of your comfort zone. It's a scary, weird type of feeling, but once you get out of your comfort zone, it kind of boosts my confidence as well. Three, dreams don't work unless you do. Now this is a little cliche type of thing. My mom got me this poster that says, dreams don't work unless you do but it's something that really resonates with me. We could have so many big aspirations, goals, but if we're not putting in the work to do it, you could kiss those dreams goodbye. And I know that this really hits me personally because I definitely have a lot of goals I wanna accomplish in life. But similar to number two, I'm very, I really like being in my comfort zone. I really like trying to stay where I'm familiar with. But in order for me to achieve those dreams and goals and successes that I have for myself and my future, I gotta put in the work. And I think I had this obsession with instant gratification as in like, you know, I have work to do, but let me just, let me just enjoy this Netflix show. I really need to clean my room, but uh, let me just take a nap. Give me more energy. That instant gratification versus delayed gratification. And I feel like it's important to really dive into that delayed gratification and put in the work so that your future self can thank you. This is something I'm, I really struggled with at 21, but I'm learning that dreams don't work unless you do. Number four, it is okay to fail. This ties into our dreams. I feel like sometimes the reasons why we don't work as hard is because we're scared of the end result. We're scared that we're not gonna make it. We're scared we're not gonna do as well. But it is okay to fail. I'm telling you, it is okay to fail. 
you see on social media everyone's successes and the more you fail, the closer you are to your success, the closer you are to your path, your dream. I'm not afraid to fail anymore. That's why I'm attempting this YouTube channel. Number five, validation is not everything. We like love validation now more than ever. That instant validation when you post a photo, that instant validation, post a little story on my Instagram when I'm looking a little cute, you know what I'm saying? But validation is not everything. And this also goes for if you're doing something that a lot of people don't like or don't support you, if there's something you truly want to do, then do it. You don't need anyone else's validation. Number six, do something that brings you joy, not something that only gets you paid. I'm saying follow your own path. I personally don't think money is everything. I like money. I do like money, but I don't know. I kind of put this pressure on myself that doing something that's going to get me money and kind of forgot happiness. Number seven, having a support system keeps you going. You don't need a huge support system. If you only have one person, that's more than enough. But I definitely feel like days where you don't feel like doing it, days where you don't want to keep on going, having people lift you up and support you definitely makes a huge, huge difference. Like it could be as little as checking in on you, encouraging you, showing you love. If you have no one in your corner, DM me. Let me know. I'll be your support system. Stop okay. eating out. There's food at home. Quarantine has definitely helped me understand this because back in college, if you knew me, I was always ordering something, whether it be McDonald's, Wendy's, Chipotle, Shake Shack. But being in quarantine, I don't eat out like at all. I've probably eaten out three, four, or five times this entire quarantine. So from March until what, August? I've only eaten out like four times and it's definitely helped me realize like you know what there's food at home i could whip up a little something something number nine it is important to heal instead of just sweeping things under the rug and burying it the reason why i put this in here is that things that i kind of went through in my life that i never really addressed and then recently it kind of resurfaced in my life and because i didn't properly heal it negatively affected me but i realized that you can't bury your trauma. Initially, it's it's the easier thing to do. It's important to heal. I really learned that you can't bury things because you don't know when they're gonna pop back up and mess you up, for real, for real. Number 10, journaling is so, so, so great. I love journaling. My journal is like my best friend. I'm thinking about something. I have a bunch of negative thoughts. I'm trying to build myself up. I write in my journal. I think it really helps me to clear my head and express my thoughts. I'm an overthinker, y'all. But when I journal, I definitely think it kind of helps me calm down and lets me think things through and kind of helps me develop more positive thoughts as well. You are so beautiful. For the longest time, I've definitely struggled with self-love. But this year, I would definitely say I definitely came into myself and believed that I was beautiful. Sidetrack, let me tell you guys a little story. In 2018, I believe, or 2017. 2017, I went to a sister concert and I got to meet her and um, I took a photo with her. I put the photo up. Hey, SZA. It's a little blurry, I'm sorry. And I was like, you know, SZA, I really admire your confidence. I struggle with confidence. And I just want to know like what tips you have for confidence. Uh, let me tell you guys what SZA shared with me. October 8th, 2017. Met SZA. She said I was beautiful. I told her I admired her confidence. And she asked, what's my name? And we hugged twice. She said, you are, are beautiful. I know you won't believe me until you believe it. And I remember, I still remember that to this day. But what she said is so important. Listen, you won't believe that you're beautiful. No matter how many times people can say that you're beautiful, you won't believe it until you really truly believe it. And I can say today that I'm beautiful and I don't need anybody to tell me that I'm beautiful because I know I'm beautiful. You're beautiful too. And it's hard, it's really hard to come to that place where you believe it too. If you believe that you're beautiful on the inside and outside, that is great. I applaud you for that. And if you're not there, it might take some time, but I really hope you get to that point where you love yourself enough to believe that you are beautiful. Because if no one has told you today, hello, hi, you are beautiful. Side note, I'm moving a little closer to y'all because I feel like there was a bit of distance. You don't need to follow all the fashion trends. 21 is definitely the age where I was like, I see things trending. I see stuff people are wearing. I'm cool with the clothes I got. If fashion is your cup of tea, that's great. Continue to follow into the trends. But for me, I said no. I'm not no fashion mogul. I'm not spending my money 
on every new trend I see. For something to be out of style within the next year, six months, tomorrow, nah. Now we're kind of stepping into friendship relationship territory. Disagreements don't need to be handled in one night. I'm a type of person where like, I like to talk things through immediately. So it's not hanging over my head because I told you I'm a thinker. But some people are not like that. They like to sleep on it so that they don't say something that they don't mean to say. For me, the thought of conflict, like it gives me anxiety. I'm like, ah, ah. but it's okay, bro. It's, it's a part of life. If someone doesn't want to talk about something a certain day, a couple days, it's fine. Let them be. I can't come and kill myself. 14. Closure is not always needed. I am a closure girl. I can accept like a friendship or a relationship. It's over, it's ended. But for me, I need to know why. Like I need to know what was the reason. And I realized not everything needs to be explained. And I realized I need to stop chasing people for explanations. It is what it is. Now, 16. Don't wish you were like someone else because you never know what they're going through. This one really sticks with me because I used to look at people and admire, let's say, their confidence, their figure, their lifestyle but that was because i really didn't know what they were going through behind closed doors you never know what someone is going through behind closed doors and that's why i realized like i'm just content with me i could admire people from afar but i don't wish i was like anybody else i'm just gonna do me 17. not everyone thinks like you I put this on there because at 21, I definitely interacted with a whole bunch of people and I realized everyone is raised differently. Everyone approaches situations differently. So the earlier that you realize that every, not everyone thinks like you, not everyone approaches situations like you, the easier it is to work together. You have to remember, not everyone has the same mindset as you. So when you approach someone with something, think about that before you say something that you might regret. The mute slash block slash remove unfollow button exists for a reason i came to realize there is no reason why i need to still be following someone that is not in my life anymore there is no reason for me to be looking at someone's story it makes me feel bad about myself you know what i'm saying bye bye number 19 if a man doesn't want to take you seriously it's not the end of the world hmm. <laughs> hmm. so i'm single y'all okay and I have dealt with a couple men in the past and they were not serious so I realized that I'm worth so much more. You can be unserious with someone else, but you're not gonna be unserious with me. Like, no, I'm, I'm leaving. <laughs> yeah, 20. Not everyone needs to be in your business. So there were people in my life who were wolves in sheepskin, who didn't want the best for me, who I would share something I'm super excited about, and they act like they're happy for me, but in reality, they are not. They weren't happy for me. Um, they were wishing negativity on me. But I really firmly believe that if you have goals, aspirations, things that you want to achieve in life, I really feel like it's better to keep that to yourself or maybe a few, few people but don't be telling everybody everything because you really cannot, you can't trust everyone. And last but not least, number 21. I have some things I need to work on as well. I have flaws as well. I could be calling everybody for this and that, calling out everyone for this and that. But what I really needed to realize was look a good look at yourself and see that girl, you're not perfect either. There's plenty of things I need to work on. Plenty of things I need to do to, um, become the best version of myself i definitely spent my 21 year old period reflecting trying to improve myself get closer to god build a better relationship with him build a better relationship with friends and family and yeah all right y'all thank you so much for sticking with me till the end of the video i know i know i know it was long but i hope you gained a little something something from the video make sure to like comment and subscribe let me know down in the comments down below if there's anything that you agree with. Also, let me know what you've learned in your 20s. I'd love to soak in knowledge. I love to soak in wise words. So let me know in the comments down below. Let's help each other and let's continue to grow and be the best versions of, our, of ourselves. All right, y'all. Bye.